G'day guys, Manky with the Outer Circle. Today I'm going to be talking about one of those contentious topics. We're going to be looking at the fluff revolving around Belisarius Call, um, and specifically the Adeptus Mechanicus. Why it is that the Mechanicum doesn't actually invent things like people keep telling me they do in the fluff. Oh, they invent things all the time. He's had 10,000 years. He's had 10,000 years to cure this, 10,000 years to do this. Well, today we're actually going to go into the fluff. That is the lore, the stories behind it all. Alright? The big weighty tome of material. First thing we're going to do is look at the Mechanicum itself. So you've got to learn something about the Mechanicum. The birthplace of the Martian Mechanicum was the ancient forge world Mars. Mars was colonized early in human history and developed separately from Terra, both culturally and technologically. The arid surface of Mars was terraformed under a man uh, sorry, under a man-made atmosphere, and the colony flourished. During the Dark Age of Technology, the two empires of Terra and Mars coexisted to the mutual benefit of both. At the height of its splendor during the Golden Age, and even later into the uh, Anarchic Age of Strife, uh, Mars dispatched hundreds of colony fleets into the void. Many perished in the terrible warp storms that engulfed the galaxy at that time, but others survived. Those that did founded new worlds in the names of the Machine God, building on them a likeness of the great factories and temples of their distant homeworld. The Age of Strife brought to an end the glory and peace of the human domains. Across the galaxy, mankind suddenly turned upon itself as a new breed of warp-attuned humans emerged. Civil war engulfed thousands of human worlds, including the twin empires of Terra and Mars. Because of a lack of maintenance during this time, Mars's atmospheric radiation shields uh, soon disintegrated, allowing deadly solar radiation to destroy the fragile ecosystem and wiping out sparse vegetation which had taken millennia to cultivate. Mars returned to being the red wasteland of the past. Plagues caused by high radiation levels slew most of the population. Many of the survivors devolved into mutants or gibbering cannibals. The destruction of the entire planet seemed likely. However, this was not to be. For a new idea began to spread around the people, a religion of survival, the cult mechanicus dedicated to the machine god. The religious devotees sought out the now sacred technology, scattered technology at that, needed to rebuild their temporary radiation shelters. The cult demanded absolute devotion from its followers, for only by selfless dedication and often personal sacrifice could machines be recovered or the planet saved. Under the direction of their tech priest leaders, the cultists set about restoring order to the world. They built shelters to protect themselves from the radiation storms and oxygen generators and food processing machines to enable them to live behind the enclosed shielding. There were few shelters, even for the tech priests and none for unbelievers. Marauders and mutant raiders tried to force their way inside the hurriedly constructed buildings. Many of the cultists died defending their shelters, and some early shelters were destroyed. But the survivors that emerged, they emerged all the stronger and more determined. The people interpreted their survival in the face of tremendous odds as vindication of the cult mechanicus. Their resolve and devotion to the cult became unshakable. While rival warlords battled over the remnants of terror, the tech priests built Mars anew. The first temples of the machine god were built. The tech priests scoured the ruins of Mars for surviving machinery, which they enshrined within the Temple of All Knowledge. Within the temple's plasteel shell, shining pistons held the vaulted roof almost a mile above. The shafts of each piston were so constructed that they moved to raise and lower the roof, altering its acoustic properties to accentuate the hymns and praise sung to the machine god. The high altar within took the form of a vast database containing the whole knowledge of the tech priests. Even today, every new discovery is dedicated to this altar. Every temple on Mars and throughout the Forge Worlds is connected to the High Altar by means of a living transmat link, a psychic servitor whose mind co-joins all the altars of the Cult Mechanicus into one holy machine entity. Now unified under the Cult Mechanicus, the priesthood of Mars began to dispatch exploratory fleets across the galaxy and even plundered the surface of war and Terra itself in hopes of discovering lost technologies. Facing resistance to their quest on the planet's surface, the Adeptus Mechanicus soon became bitter enemies of the Techno-Barbarians which plagued Terra, and thus welcomed the eventual arrival of the Emperor. 
The next thing that happened was obviously the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. Many technologies were rediscovered during the Great Crusade, but then the Horus Heresy basically split Mars in two. Um, it was a great schism. And what then happened from there on was um, the forces of chaos in some part um, became the Dark Mechanicum, and the rest became the Adeptus Mechanicus. Now the Dark Mechanicum, they corrupted much of what there was. They took technologies, STCs, and STCs are the information, the plans to creating technology. And each STC is its own little technological blueprint. And if you get them all together as one, you've got the full standard template construct system. But unfortunately, it was destroyed long ago, a functioning one. And so all they have left are little scraps of it. And during this period, Chaos took a lot of the technology that the Imperium had. They can't produce land raiders properly anymore. Why? Because Chaos took all the plans. You wouldn't realise that looking in the books, because Chaos has less land raiders than Imperium. Work that one out. Um, but they took them into the Eye of Terror. Things like speeders, jet bikes, their STCs were lost as well. I believe land speeders still have one of their STCs, but... Um, things like the javelin land speeder that kind of thing they were lost that's why they're now known as relic vehicles the means of production is gone to the imperium a lot of what was left behind was corrupted by chaos they destroyed plans or changed plans the plans themselves became dangerous things so what happened since the heresy well the mechanicus has become fanatically ingrained in the dogma of the cult mechanicus as their forge worlds supply mankind with vital weaponry and technology, the Adeptus Mechanicus continues their quest for knowledge and vigorously hunt for the remains of their precious STCs. There are major conflicts within the Mechanicum over the tenants of the Cult Mechanicus, and they've plagued the Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, these include the Morai Schism, the Martian Civil War, and the Euclidean schism. Uh, schism. However, over the millennia, the ability of the Adeptus Mechanicus to actually reproduce technology from the Great Crusade has gradually diminished. Even the Golden Throne, cornerstone of the Imperium, is proving beyond the ability of the Adeptus Mechanicus to repair and maintain. Their quest for knowledge is the driving mission behind the Adeptus Mechanicus. The quest consists of research, exploration, but ultimately the focus of the quest is recovering the STCs. They want a full one. They want a full standard template construct. The main purpose of many exploratory missions is the recovery of one of these. For thousands of years, tech priests have pursued all information about the STC. To the Mechanicus, it's their lost Bible. Any information on the STC, including the scraps of knowledge recorded on hard copy designs, they're sought out. They're kept as holy relics, holy texts. It's like finding pages of the Bible. No functional STC has been recovered. The STC survives only as printouts, some of which are many thousands of years old. Although considered the most reliable, there are very few first generation printouts, and these are regarded as the most sacred of texts. Though the tech priest's efforts, uh, sorry, through their efforts, much has been recovered or reconstructed through comparison of copies. Although preserved knowledge of the most advanced technology eludes the Adeptus Mechanicus, most of the early colonists' needs were simple, and very few would have bothered to preserve and the more theoretical and advanced technologies and information that the STC contained. So, pretty much all of what I've just read to you um, is mostly from uh, Lixicanum, but the actual books, several which are sitting around me, uh, that it was pulled from include the Codex Imperialis by Rick Priestley, uh, Realm of Chaos, The Lost and the Damned, The Mechanicum Novel by Graham McNeil, The Horus Heresy, Book 1, Betrayal, which goes into, you know, The Mechanicum quite a bit. In fact, most of the Horus Heresy black books from Forge will go into the early Mechanicum in some way, talking about the automata, uh, the orders, that kind of thing. It's very interesting stuff if you're into it. There's also the Games Workshop Codex, Cult Mechanicus, 7th edition. Uh, the Warhammer 40,000 rule books over several years, and the Binary Secession audio drama. Now, 
I want to read to you a quote by a gamer who actually sums up the situation really well for the Mechanicum. And again, this is all a quote. The Mechanicus does not have the technology. They haven't been living on some fancy paradise planet since pre-fall. Mars is an anarchic nightmare shithole. The moment you leave the safe zones into the kilometres of labyrinth corridors beneath it, a full of rogue machinery, self-aware, malevolent AI from before the fall, and the demon programs of the Horus Heresy, everything in the databases is fucked. The databases are fragmented over the entire surface to the extent that it would be impossible to see one-tenth of the total files in the ludicrously extended life of a Magos, even assuming that they are completely safe to visit, and they're not. The files have been corrupted into madness by the fall, and the unleashing of the most potent informational warfare systems ever to exist just to defeat the Men of Iron. Nearly all of Mars was rendered uninhabitable, and they live now... Uh, where they live now is built on top of the ruins. They send archaeotech expeditions in to find things. Nearly all of them never come back. The sheer number of rogue war machine running around in there is sufficient to rape the mind. They, then came the heresy, which is not Earth exclusive. Mars, as the second most critical planet in the Imperium, was the site of fighting nearly as ferocious as on Terra, with Mechanicus loyalists and heretics fighting tooth and nail and mechandrite everywhere. The ancient machines were unleashed. Viruses, both normal and demonic, unleashed into all the computer systems. Towards the close of the heresy, Dawn sent some space marine operatives to wipe the planet clean of all life. Nearly every single stored record on Mars was rendered unusable, and those that survived are half the time self-aware, and if they don't like you, or they're demonically active, they'll try and kill you. If you come back with a schematic, it is almost certainly gibberish. And if it isn't, it's probably corrupted into uselessness. If it does come back whole, it was probably malevolently fucked with. So, then instead of a lasgun power cell, it's probably a grenade set to detonate the second you finish building it. Why do you think they want off-world STCs so damn much if they have them all on Mars? The heresy is why. Off-world, they only have to contend with the Falls War, and its effects on the machinery plus 20,000 years of degradation with no maintenance. But at least off-world, it'll probably just not work, instead of actively seeking to kill you. Why do you think they seek to placate the machine spirit? It's because it exists. The fragments of trillions of self-aware programs flourishing during the dark age of technology and shattered by man in his war with the Iron Men, imprisoning the few uh, who had not set themselves irrevocably into the machinery, a prison smashed wide open by the heresy. Everything that can hold programming in the Imperium has a shard of a program in it. Everything. And you better fucking please it, or it will do everything in its power to make your day shit. They apply these principles to things without spirits by habit, since they're so used to dealing with tanks that if they're not talked to, just right, might go rogue and annihilate the manufacturer before they can be killed. This is why they do not like anyone fucking with technology because it is so rare to find anything that just works. It is critical not to be compromised. That, and they do not have the actual knowledge to fuck with it intelligently. Just through experimentation, it can lead to slaughter. Pressing buttons to see what works is fine in the 21st century, but it's a very stupid thing to do, and you're at the helm of 410th century starship with a destructive power to end solar systems. The entire knowledge base of humanity was lost. Not forgotten, but outright lost. Everything at all. Poof. Nobody knows anything, because the fall fucked everything up, and then the heresy double fucked it. To rebuild the theoretical framework needed to design new technologies that don't kill everyone near them would require starting from the ground up. They don't have the time, they never have, and they never will. This gets onto the point of war, and what it does to technology. Someone will parrot that it makes it go much faster. And yes, it makes practical applications of technology go faster, but it also utterly stops all research on the scientific theories behind those technologies. This means that when war chugs along for a decade or two, things get done. It means when it goes on too long, though, you run out of theories to turn to technologies, and then you run out of technologies to apply. You stagnate. And when you've been fighting in a war for survival, in a dramatically, uh, dramatically, sorry, <laughs> drastically or dramatically, 
either or, uh, overextended empire, this is what happens. You're desperate for any extra material which you can possibly produce. Half your entire fucking military, it went rogue. It smashed the half that stayed loyal. Whole swaths of your logistics side and your society was just destroyed, leaving you with just tattered shreds of a war machine to keep hold of an empire that was reaching straining point with an army far larger. There is no time for the sort of applied research programs that took man 25,000 years to develop in a time of unprecedented growth and prosperity. This is why the Indeptus Mechanicus insists on cargo cultivism. It's because when you're dealing with things you barely understand because everything you knew about them was destroyed is just the safest and most reliable option. The rituals did not exist for mysticism. They exist because they are the most practical means of building, repairing and maintaining the equipment they have with the knowledge surviving. You don't understand why pressing that button makes it go, because the manual tried to take over your brain, and the copies are all unreadable, and the research base that would let you reverse engineer it does not exist and cannot be built. Why are the Tau doing so well with their technology? Because they had peace, 8,000 years unmolested by any enemy, and they were helped the entire time by the most biologically advanced race in the galaxy. Now, let's try looking at this another way. Imagine you build a library, you fill it with all of human knowledge. Then you take it elsewhere when you need a book from it. But the book is only a simplified copy. You don't understand the real book, and you don't need to. Nobody takes the real books anywhere, because why would you when there's a whole library there? One day, that library goes rogue, and the maintenance machinery starts killing everyone, and anyone fucking anywhere near it. Where the fuck did they all come from? You swear to God that there weren't this many. And there weren't, because they're using the library's information to fight their war. The government fights a battle that destroys the planet against these robots and tears apart the library trying to stop them from using it, only to be destroyed in the process. The library is leveled, cast into flames, and every book burned, every computer virus, uh, every computer it's virus laden. Then comes a man who worked there. He talks to a few surviving library workers, assembles their information, and starts rebuilding a city around the library, expanding it as the librarians fill little scraps of paper, fragments, bits of files, and they stick them all together. You just might be able to read something. They re rebuild a library from scrap on the ashes of the old. It isn't a shadow of the glory of the old, but it's all they have. Then the city turns on itself kills its master and the librarians turn to rage. Half of them kill the other half, and they destroy the remnants of the library, because where they're going they won't need science. Everything burns and the city is left to a few scattered survivors. Walls open to the world with hungry predators swirling. The Adeptus Mechanicus is the sole surviving librarian, desperately scrabbling through the ashes of paper and splinters of hard drives for anything to help them and the city he needs to survive just a little longer. The Imperium isn't grim, because these things suck by choice and would be fine if a sensible person came along. That sensible person wouldn't survive 50 seconds of the reality. The Imperium is grim because every single shit decision, every single sacrifice, every single death, every single man, woman and child suffering a shit life in the worst conditions imaginable is the absolute best that can actually be done. It is a study of the worst happening to everyone and what part of the humanity must be sacrificed today just to stand a chance of survival, and all it asks, whether or not, would perhaps be better to die. That was written by Baron Von Evil Satan. Very cool name, by the way. Um, but that's it, right? Belisarius Call doesn't know the technology. They aren't painstakingly researching things. Yes, he has 10,000 years to research, assuming he's been alive that whole time and actually conducting the research and you know the thing is the cult mechanicus is it's fanatical they don't like people doing things outside of their very very strict left and right of arc you know it's like an orthodox religion of some kind you know there's a right way of doing it and everything else is fucking wrong and not just that they don't understand the technology they don't invent new things they're, they're struggling just day to day with the technology they've got. The only new thing that has been invented since the uh, end of the Age of Strife 
is the Laz Cannon. That's it. That's the only thing they've actually invented. Everything else existed in some form or another already. Or, if someone actually does happen to design something, they're killed off for it. The June Strider, I believe, is an example of that. So, you know, <laughs> this is the situation. So when people want to say, oh, mechanics invent things, you know, the Imperium, you know, they're technologically fantastic. No, no, it's the exact opposite. This is the state of the Imperium. This is the fluff, this is the law, this has been written down over 30 years of 40k's history. And overnight, we're just throwing it all away because some Martian special character just came along. And that's fine with people. And hey, if you're into that, that's fine. But just don't deny the facts that, you know, the story, it doesn't sync up with the fluff, the lore, the history of the game. It doesn't match up at all. And yeah, cool. If you are happy with the direction the fluff has taken, all the power to you. I'm not telling you you can't enjoy it. I'm just asking, maybe you can just recognize that it doesn't work. Anyway, I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Let me know your thoughts and comments below, and I'll see you all next time.